Good morning. That's the Flume Franconia Notch Waterfall in New Hampshire, where they watch us on Fox 16, and this is Fox After Breakfast. You're welcome all to come over, and you're invited to stay. It might be just for a moment, maybe we can brighten you. Giles, today from The Tonight Show and Star Search, the legendary Ed McMahon is here. Golden Globe winner Nev Campbell from the Fox series Party of Five is also in the house. There's a tap dancing granny in Oklahoma and an elephant matchmaker in Oregon that we're going to meet. Elephant dating, okay? It's New York City, the corner of 26th and 5th Avenue, and Tom Laurie and Bob the Puppet are all here. And you're welcome to join us in our house. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. I have to tell you, uh, I didn't know that that would be our first shot, the flume in New Hampshire. I've gone there as a little Tommy. Oh. Yeah, with my grandparents. I brought back just a memories. whole... Memories. Downloaded a whole bunch of memories. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you, right in the hard drive. Uh, <laughs> Democratic convention last night, of course, and there were some very moving speeches with Christopher Reeve, Sarah, and Jim Brady. One thing that hasn't got as much coverage, but I did read online this morning, that there was a big uh, sort of convention Macarena on the convention oh, really? floor. That's true, yeah. And you thought politicians just knew how to tap dance, right? See? Well, we've got tap dancing, as you alluded to, uh, in Oklahoma and elsewhere, right, Bobby? <laughs> big fussy, big fussy, little fussy, little fussy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Criminy. <laughs> shuffle off to the bedroom, shuffle off to the... <laughs> Hello! Catherine Betts joins us from Vogue. We're going to take a look at the Vogue yeah, index. Hubba, hubba, some, huh? yeah. some fine Vogue fashions. Welcome, Catherine. Good to Hi. have you Thank with you. us. And also, we've got some uh, some wonderful celebrity guests, one of whom I heard actually is coveting uh, my job. Lori Hibbard. Good morning. Pretty in pink. Thank you very really much. Nice. Very Someone's nice. coveting your job? Would yeah. it be well, no, Ed, Mc no, Ed, 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 Ed McMahon? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I might... Ed, I understand uh, Al Rosenberg, who is Bob the Puppet's agent and handler. Hey, I love that man. Yes. <laughs> he said that you were mentioning to him in casual conversation that, that you would love to do this kind of show. In fact, you would love to actually take my, my particular... It wasn't casual comp conversation. <laughs> no. No. no, I have an intent feeling about that, and okay. I'd love to take your job. Uh -oh, oh, Tom. Okay. I'm with you, Ed. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Bob, hey, we'd work well together. Ed will be hosting a new show for me, Job Search. <laughs> We're glad to have uh, Ed McMahon here. I want to thank you for something. What? The cold that you oh, had. Oh, man, you're like the ninth person week. who's blaming me. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, you're, you're as close as I got to I'm someone with it. So yeah. sorry. I'm I apologize stage. to everybody who I gave the cold to. I'm I know. sick, and Ed McMahon wants my job. It's <laughs> hell here today. Sign of the times, ladies and gentlemen. Divorce Magazine. This what? is the first issue. It's uh, a, a Chicago-based magazine. Okay. Why? I don't know. Is there a lot more divorce in, in Chicago? Interesting reading, though. There's some um, interesting articles. The first one, The Dating Game. Haven't been out in a date in 15 years. We'll show you some great new ways of meeting people in the 90s. <laughs> a perfect fit. How to find a lawyer tailor-made to suit your unique needs. Well. Wow. And uh, a couple of other interesting things. Buried treasure. If you suspect your spouse is hiding assets, help find them. Good. You know, help good. You find an interesting read if you're in Chicago and you want to check out know. Divorce Magazine. I don't know if divorce is more prevalent in Chicago. One of the things I thought we could do in Chicago to help our ratings, because we're on opposite Oprah, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. is yeah. maybe get Stedman to propose on our show. <laughs> that nice? That's Wouldn't a that thought. Nice? Yeah. Why don't we try yeah. to get Gelman to propose on our show? Yeah. Go, Lori. Oh, Go, Lori. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. There's a flag hey, on everyone. Oh. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did. See, for Where's Michael you, when we need him? Yeah. For those of you who don't have the uh, Morning Wars scorecard, <laughs> Lori dates Michael Gelman, who's producing some other talk show across town right now. Yeah. Right, that other thing. Yeah. That didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> Just move along, move yeah, along, okay. nothing to see here. Oh, I smell miniseries. Get the spelling on the phone, would you? Hey. <laughs> well, that is kind of good to have you here. We'll be with you in a moment. Okay. You <laughs> <have enough time. laughs> We're working out nice our act thing, over Tom. here. Because <laughs> I'll never be invited back here. Huh? Yeah, that's all right. We'll be on our own, Ed. You and me, kid. <laughs> Jeff McGregor joins us. He's in Tulsa, Oklahoma today, and he is with not just a, a dancing grandmother, but a champion dancing grandmother. Ooh. Right, Jeff? That's right. She's the queen of tapping, Tom. Uh, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this morning at Faye Prater's School of Dance. Walk this way, if you would. Well, if I could walk that way, I wouldn't need the talcum. Wow. 
uh, the Faith Prater School of Dance. Notice to all salespeople and solicitors, do not even bother to come into this studio. No money, no time to talk. But she's got uh, looser rules for network television. Ah, warm welcome. Now, yeah. Faye is 68 years old. She's the grandmother of three. She has won 12 national titles, as you can see from the trophy room here. Wow. And in just a couple minutes, we're going to find out what keeps her tapping, what keeps her tapping so well, and how tap might be something good for you. Take a look inside and see those people. Hey. Wow. Uh, wow. All right. They look great. We'll have, like, tap dancing human flags later on A bunch on of the Michael show. Jackson wannabes, huh? That's very nice. Nice. So, yes, you'll be tapping a little later in the show. You'll see champion tap dancing in action. Right now, uh, on the heels of having had the captain and Tennille here, Muskrat Love People, last week, it's Elephant Love uh, from Portland, Oregon. Jillian Hamilton yeah. is at the Portland... Oh, my. Excuse me, it's just the <laughs> cold I caught from Lori. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's at the Portland Washington Park Zoo. Good morning, Jill. Hey, Tom, I'm behind the scenes at the Washington Park Zoo here in Portland. And come with me, because there's someone that I want you to meet. Yeah. Right over here, this is Rose the second. Now she's a baby elephant. She weighs over 1,600 pounds and she's two years old. Now she was brought into this world. Whoa, she was brought into this world. <laughs> Hello. Oh Likes Smith, orange. Who is the foremost breeder of Asiatic elephants in captivity. When yeah. we come back, we're going to find out how Michael, the elephant matchmaker, is helping save these animals from extinction. That's when we come back in just a couple minutes. And how are you doing? I understand you were a little nervous about getting in there with the elephants earlier. Yeah. Oh, actually, it was my idea to come in here. I don't yeah, know what you were right, oh. yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? You know what it was? Peter Feynman, our executive producer, said, Well, Jill, if you're really nervous, Tom can do the interview himself from New York. She said, You know, suddenly I don't mind going in there. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Please welcome Ed McMahon to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Tom, thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Nice to see you. I'm so happy about this show thank being you. on the net, it's wonderful. Thank you. I watch it. It's my new treadmill show. Is that That's right? Hey. Hey. You know why? Because a lot of the other shows that you watch, they're kind of structured. You know where it's going to go, the news desk over sure, here, a couple yeah. of commercials, then back over here, then the gossip thing, whatever. But this show, I don't know where it's going. Yeah. And that helps me get through my hour on You're the not treadmill. Alone, Adam. Yeah, I know. You don't know either, yeah. which, which makes it wonderful. Yeah. And the man who knows the least, of course, is our producer. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it's great because. Uh, Wait a minute, I want to show you just, you talked about if, if I, I, I can't do it now, but years ago I might have, you know, done something like this, but watch how good Bob and I work. <clears throat> go, go ahead, Bob. Well, it was so cold. How cold <laughs> was it? <clears throat> it was so cold, I saw a robin put his worm in a microwave. That's cold. That's cold. All right. <laughs> put it in. Hello. Hello. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm Pretty killing bad. me. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, no, I, I do the laughing. You I, do the oh, jokes. Yeah, okay. I do the laughing. Okay. I uh, did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I'm very happy for your success. Oh, the show you. is wonderful. I've been watching it a lot, and I think some of your remotes are just great. That thing in the underwater cave was a... Bill Kogan. Kogan did Phil? that. Yeah. Right Bill Kogan yeah. is yeah. back home He's after of, being uh, a brilliant, brilliant work. Raise that your hand, really Kate. Thank you very much. I think yeah. a lot of the other shows will be looking in on your show to find out how to do those remotes yeah. properly. Yeah. yeah. Well, we know at least one other show that will be looking in on this show to see how his relationship is going. Well, <laughs> you, you either yeah. set the fire or put the fire yeah. out. Yeah. I, don't I, don't know I don't know what... I don't know how, which way to tell you. I don't know what to do, but... I'll know uh, when I get home tonight, I guess. Michael, <laughs> is, Michael is a great guy, and uh, I'm very happy for both of you, whichever way it goes. Yeah, but it's time, yeah. To step, yeah. it's, it's time for him to step up to the plate, don't you I think? I think so. Yeah. Right yeah. Are we here to yeah. talk no. about yeah. Ed McMahon? No, I think yeah. this is taking an interesting <laughs> turn. Wait a minute. It took him four years to make a decision yeah. about his hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good point. It's yeah. true. It's right. true. Yeah. And then he made the wrong one. That's yeah. right. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, Tom. Oh, hopefully like that won't happen with you. No. <laughs> no. He's lucky to have you. That's what I say, too. I do. That's right. Yeah, thank and you. if it doesn't work out, there's always me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look what I have to look forward to. Right. <laughs> so you, among your many things, you're here with uh, the ultimate uh, cracker contest with the yes. disco. Cracker snacking. Now this yes. is these are, are these Ritz crackers. Here? Those are Ritz crackers with yeah. peanut butter inside, dipped in chocolate. Now, if you that's want the winning recipe. That's right? the winning oh. recipe. This is the what winning we did. recipe? What's that? No, not that. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. The winning right. recipe. Okay. Two Ritz crackers yeah. filled with peanut butter, yeah. dipped in chocolate, white chocolate, Ooh. or dark chocolate. Regular chocolate or little uh, uh, nut crumbs on top. But here's what happened. We went all around the country. Went to 52 states, 50 yeah. states, and then the District of Columbia. We had a write-in contest with uh, video. And we had a big thing in Boise, Idaho. Mm -hmm. Why 
Boise, you Why Boise? Why Boise? Why? Boise is the cracker snack capital of the world. Well. Nobody knows why, but they have more cracker snacks in Boise, almost twice the national average. Now, right. tell me the truth. Is that delicious? This? Yeah. Is it good? No. Everything sits good on We're the rest. Meet, and these people are real Americana types. Can we get a shot of John and Sue Derby? John and Sue Derby. They're, down They're down in the Millington, Tennessee. Where are they? There they, they are. are. Hey. That's right. John is uh, traveling with the uh, the three tenors. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> he's the fourth tenor. Let me tell you, he's got a great operatic voice. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we don't have time for the whole song, but I want him to do just one line. And this may have been what convinced the judges. And we had a big array of judges. We had the mayor of Boise. We had the governor of Idaho. Yeah. I was one of the judges. Uh, wait, John, give him that one line that flipped me out. Just this one line. The first thing you need is Nabisco Ritz. Any other brand would just be the pit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, and he wasn't overacting yeah. or anything. <laughs> that was natural. It's awkward. It's awkward. Now, can I ask a favor of you? Yes. Yeah, and I, I expect and hope that you'll be here for the whole hour. With I that. will. All right, sure. So, I, will. So, I flew all night to get here. Right? <laughs> right? I just got off an airplane. You're going to dump me no, after five not minutes? A, no. Not what a kind of a show is this? No. Not a show. Chance. I'm, uh, not a chance. I expect to get some more. Maybe I could get another couple of decals. I think we can get that. <laughs> we can do that. But only yes. if you'll sing the blues for us. I understand one of the things you love to well, do. Well, no way. I do, but you can't sing the blues in the morning. Blues oh, yeah, are a nighttime can. thing. Oh, not yeah. if you had to get up as early as I did. All right, let me see if I can do something. You want right. to come over? Come on over. We got the piano. We got the piano. All right. Rock yeah, is yeah. ready. Yeah. About, now, now, this is tough. I know when you, when you feel the blues and sing the blues, it's hard to time the blues. But can you do about... 30 seconds of blues? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, let me yeah. see what he's got. He's sitting to a little uh, Is your blues basic microphone? blues structure in E. Ladies and gentlemen, on live television, Ed McMahon, huh. he's oh, singing the man. blues. Yeah, on the top of this. When you wake up in the morning and you're feeling kind of blue, let me tell you, Mr. Exactly what to do. Grab a bagel. Get some locks and tune in after breakfast. Oh, yeah. That's on Fox. That's we'll right. be right back. I'll tell you, Party of Five, what a show. It's on Fox. It debuted last week to terrific numbers, some of the best ratings they've had. It uh, has a lot of critical acclaim and a great core base of fans. That's why we're so thrilled to have Nev Campbell here. She plays Julia on Party of Five, and she'll be joining us a little bit later. Now, I don't know about you if you've picked up your copy of, oh, the new Vogue catalog. This is an incredible September issue full of amazing things that you can buy and wear and look good in. We are going to get Catherine Betts, who's the fashion news director, to sort of dissect it for us and tell us what exactly we really, really, really need to have this fall to look our best. That's coming up, too. And also, we're going to meet the tap-dancing granny of Tulsa, Oklahoma. All this when Fox After Breakfast continues. <laughs> Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast, live from 212 Fifth Avenue with Tom, Lori, Bob the Puppet, and that blues singing man, Ed McMahon. Yeah. How about another yeah. ad for Ed yeah. McMahon? Yeah. 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 Woo. All right. Woo. Yeah. Hey, Woo. That was great, Ed. Thanks. 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 Okay. Lori's with our visiting family today. Indeed, we have a visiting family every day here on Fox After Breakfast. Today, we have the Tesseronis from Garfield, New Jersey. I'd like to welcome Wayne and Linda, Wendy, Don and Brian, and also we have Phil Kogan back home from the road, and Suzanne Wong, our two hey, intrepid road warriors from last week. Welcome, all of you. Thanks for being here. Tessaronis, the <laughs> San Francisco <laughs> tree. Good to have you here. Well, you uh, New Jersey, I guess, actually. <laughs> now, earlier, Ed, you know, we mentioned that we were going to actually see a champion grandmother tap dancer and her uh, flag-clad entourage. We're going to do that right now. Aren't we, Terry? Yes. Trying to get out of the way, aren't yes. you? Well, this is the wrong show to do that on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff McGregor's with us in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I amidst the trophies. To clear a camera for me anywhere. Uh, but by the way, on the list of imminent apocalypse, I yes. believe number five is Ed McMahon Sings the Blues. Oh, no, it uh, isn't. It I'm is in Tulsa, not. Oklahoma at Faye Prater School of Dance. Faye is a 12-time national champion, as you can see from these trophies. She's also the grandmother of three. She's sort of the Hammer and Hank Aaron of Tap and Granny. Uh -huh. So come on in and let's say hi. Hi, Faye, how are you? Hi, how are you? 
I'm very well, thank you. Say hi to Tom and Lori, please. Bob, hi, McMahon and Tom. Hi, Lori. Hi, hi Faye. Hi. Yeah, we were just, just, just discussing the fact that we're all waiting for a big novelty check from Ed. So, Faye, how long have you been teaching tap? Uh, 36, 34 years. 34 years. Well, I tell you what, you've had like, what, 1,200 students or something, right? Yeah. And they're all pictured here on the walls. Yeah. This is just amazing. One, what is it you two, love three, so much about four, tap? Five, I've always loved it from the first time I saw it when I was eight. Uh -huh. Who did you see tapping when you were eight? I saw Eleanor Powell, and I just fell in love with dancing and decided I wanted to make that my life. She was absolutely terrific. Let's take a look up here. Uh, now, you told me that... Uh, uh, what did you tell me earlier? You told me that Cindy... <laughs> I forgot. I absolutely forgot. I you told me that Cindy had she told you, you when she was eight. <laughs> uh -huh. it was me, and then uh, she came back this year. Uh huh. So, uh, Cindy, why did you come back to study more tap? Well, my husband travels a lot, and I was just looking for something to do uh, when he's out of town and kind of pick up a hobby. And I picked up, I picked up the phone book, and there was Faye still teaching. After Faye still years. teaching. Faye, yeah. what we'd like to see most is you dancing, obviously. Yeah. So let's go ahead, and Cindy's going to work the boom box, yeah. and we're going to watch uh, Faye dance. I'll be providing the stunt audio for this. So go <laughs> ahead and cue that up, Cindy. I a string around your finger, too. While you're and right. Faye Prater <laughs> tapping granny. <laughs> the art sound. She's incredible. Yeah. This hour in the morning, I can't even make a fist, and she can do this. <laughs> Get back over there. Shoot her. Aw. Okay. No now, Lori, can you tap dance? Because you should be you up tap dancing I'll while you do this. I'll have you know that I spent six years at the Twinkle Toes Tap Dancing School in Ottawa, Ontario. <laughs> then there's no I'll excuse great for you to be White. sitting there. Yeah. You should not yeah. be sitting there. Iona, Iona Hooper, grandmother of seven, is going to do a little number now with, uh, with Faye. So go ahead and cue the music, Larry. Let me get out of the way. Okay, now watch this. Uh, Lori, you should be able to do this quite easily with Tom back in the studio. <laughs> Smile. You get yourself killed, Jeff. It's always funny till someone loses an eye. <laughs> okay, now what we have to do now, this is the big production number that Fox After Breakfast has dreamed of. All right. For, what, fully two weeks. Yeah. So this is sort of a June Taylor dancer overhead shot. Go ahead, cue the, mu cue the music for the big military number. We'll go out on this. Okay. Steve, take your position on the crane, if you would, please. Thanks to Thank Faye you, and all the tap dancers yeah. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which uh, just underscores you're only as old as what you think you are between your ears. We have somebody here in the apartment now with us who actually starts tap dancing lessons, from what I understand. <laughs> she Dude, that's right, right. right. Next week, Nev Campbell for Party hey. of Fun. Hey. Okay. We can start lessons today, then. Good, good, all right, good. Faye be standing by. Nev may need a lesson today. <laughs> yeah. Lori? Hi, Nev. How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, Good. 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 <laughs> Glad to have Nev Campbell back. We're going to be talking to her later. We're also going to talk about the new Ouch. issue of Vogue. Seven pounds, 700 pages. Catherine Betts is going to take us through it and tell us what women should be wearing this fall and how easy it is really to make yourself look like one of these models. Ha, ha, ha. Also, Jillian Hamilton is uh, going to introduce us to a man who makes elephant's dreams come true. His name is Mike Schmidt. He's a veterinarian who specializes in elephant matchmaking. Yeah. And he's coming up next on Fox After Breakfast. You can feel it. Introducing the remarkable Gillette Sensor Excel for women. Feel its unique handle and its soft rubber grip that won't slip when wet. Feel Ahead of the blades are soft micro fins to protect your skin while lifting stubborn hairs. So the spring mounted twin blades give you our closest, safest shave ever. You can feel it. The new Sensor Excel for women. Feel it. And try Satin Care, the moisture rich shave gel from Gillette. Discover the bath bar that might. Fox 43.
Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast Live from New York City with Tom, Lori, Bob the Puppet, Ed McMahon, and Nev Campbell. Take it away. Thank you very much, Nancy. Coming up, we are going to meet the elephant matchmaker. Ooh. But first, we have a very <laughs> special guest in the apartment with Tom. Is that, excuse me, <laughs> that's, nice. uh, that's, that's, that. that's the cold again, I'm sorry. Was, <laughs> that, was that from the Little Rascals CD? That yeah. music? Wonderful choice. Wonderful choice. <laughs> oh, oh, brother. Brother. Yeah. It's one that's in my library, I'll tell you very much. <laughs> Nev Campbell is here uh, from the Golden Globe award-winning show on Fox, we hasten to add, Party of Five. How about a hand for Nev? Hey, Nev. Nev. Now, Nev, uh, Ed McMahon, uh, previously uh, coming forth and coveting my job over here, uh, is here just in case my line of questioning, uh, as, as he put it, stinks. Okay. So he'll, he'll be in here to, to help out. But before we do, I think, Lori, for anyone who has uh, not yet uh, really had the pleasure of seeing Party of Five, can you give us an overview of who Nev and her co-stars are and their relationship. Sure, that's, this is their uh, five siblings. They lost their parents in a tragic car accident, so the whole series is really about how they try to pick up their lives and move on. First of all, we have Charlie, the oldest brother. He is kind of involved with the uh, little baby's nanny. Her name is Kirsten. They got engaged, and then he left her at the altar. It was all very traumatic. Hater. But now they're back together, so you never know what's going to happen. Then we have Bailey. He, uh, his first girlfriend, let me see, left him. His second girlfriend died. He's got a third girlfriend now. She's a singer in a club, and he's actually decided not to go to college so that he can spend time with her. Very heavy stuff. Then we have Nev, who plays uh -huh. Julie. I, I pointed the wrong picture. There's Nev yeah. down there. <laughs> Julia has uh, one boyfriend, and she got pregnant, and then... Um, Did she get the boyfriend pregnant? No, she no. then miscarried the baby, and then she broke up with the guy, and now she's dating a guy that she cheated on the first guy with. It's very confusing. Yeah. Maybe Nev can help us out with that one. We have uh, Claudia, who's just starting to date. She just met her first boyfriend uh, at uh, summer camp, so she's got a lot of stuff ahead of her. And, of course, then there's baby Evan, who we barely ever see Nev. He's like the best baby in the world. He's low maintenance. We never get to see him, but I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff coming up on the show. And that's part of your Wow, five. nicely done. Nice Thank you. Good job, Laurie. All right, Laurie. You have Laurie and uh, Gelman get on there and have party of seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their relationship is just as confusing. You know, yeah. we, if we keep harping on this, the party may be over. <laughs> yeah. Leave it alone. I, I won't do anything wrong. Yeah. Now, I understand, uh, party of five aside, that at the age of 10, mm -hmm. in school, mm -hmm. kids wrote a song about how ugly <laughs> you were? They did. She was ugly? Wow. Yeah. Yes, Get yes. out I was, of town. I was not popular at all at my school. There's actually a song, and what they did is they had a song about each girl in my class, and it went from prettiest to ugliest. Yeah. And all I know about me was I was the last kid, and it was Nev. Ah, Nev. <laughs> oh. And that, that was the song. There's a lot yeah. of crow eating going on now, yeah. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, from you fellow Canadians, too. Yeah, from yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, the Golden Globe Award uh, had to be like the pinnacle of excitement for all of you on the cast. It was a shock. Yeah. It was definitely a shock. A shock. Well, yeah. I, I think for me, I, I don't know, I'm very, I tend to be somewhat cynical. And mm -hmm. I, when we were going down the red carpet line during the Golden Globes, all the press people were saying, you know, do you guys think you're going to win? And everyone was like, yeah, maybe we have a chance. I was like, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the next person, not a chance. I just didn't even want to entertain the thought. But yeah. it was a wonderful, wonderful honor and experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Peter Feynman is, is uh, our executive producer, yeah. has decided to start yelling things yeah. at me in the of what Peter. I think is a very good interview, Peter. Yeah. So hand him a microphone, Terry, and share yeah. it with the country, Peter. Uh, Tom, we have a very, very good clip to show. Oh, we and do? we think you should do it now. Oh, you think so? Sure. <laughs> help the audience understand did you, the show a little excuse more. Me, did you put him up to this? No, no, I don't even know that man. In fact, I thought he came with you. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, Tom, here's a chance no, to be a man. Clip. Don't show it. I think to see the clip. All right. Excuse me, Bob. We're going to take a look at a clip okay. from Party of Five. Cool. Where's Griffin? Oh. I don't know. I haven't seen him. Maybe he's out there. Maybe he's on one of those ships. One of those could be his. So I'm guessing things didn't go so great. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad thing, huh? I mean, it's like what's past is past. And now I'm completely open to meeting someone great. Maybe I'll meet someone great at this party. Or maybe I'll just take a breather. That, that's that yeah. Golden Globe oh. Award attitude again. <laughs> Nothing good gonna happen here. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, some really emotionally taxing stuff for, mm -hmm. for each of you, certainly you during the whole story arc about being pregnant and miscarrying. Yeah. Do you bring that home with you? Do you do you get exhausted or too into the character? Um, 
I, I try very hard not to, mm -hmm. you know, because we do deal with very heavy issues yeah. and 14 hours a day, that, that can become a little much. So you know, it might be interesting at times, excuse me, friend, but mm. uh, wondering all the other young ladies watching yeah. us now that might have been voted least likely oh, to point. succeed. Good point. Yeah. When did you get the germ? When did you know you had some talent? When did you know you were ready to get into this business? Uh, well, sort of since I was born, you know, I mean, I started, I started walking on my toes before I started uh -huh. crawling, and, uh, and, um, when I was... Little playlets for your mother and Yeah, stuff. absolutely. To my, both my or not to pee, yeah. that is... Yeah. 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 Both my older brother and I were performing since we were kids, just with amateur theater groups, and our father teaches drama, and our mom had a dinner theater, so we were sort of brought up with it. But I started dancing when I was six, and I do ballet and jazz, modern contemporary, and then go in hip hop. Tap. And next week I'm going to start tap because I went and saw um, Big Band Voodoo Daddy, and now oh. I just gotta go uh, and take tap. If we have time, can mm -hmm. we get a little lesson from Faye and Kelsa for you? Sure, absolutely. all right. All right. Bev Campbell, part of the Fox family, party of five on Wednesdays at nine o'clock, and that was a very good. That was a great question. You know, you're on the way out, sure. I know. <laughs> it's a tough business. Deb Campbell with it. Hey. So if you weigh over a ton and you have four feet and a really big nose, you can still find love, according to Mike Schmidt. He is an elephant matchmaker, and we're going to meet him when we come back. Also, the big Vogue September issue is out. 700 pages, seven pounds of fashion, and Catherine Betts is going to take us through it when we come back on Fox After Breakfast. Because moms know Pepperidge Farm goldfish crackers are baked, not fried like most chips. And they're cheesy, not sugary like... Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast Live from 212 Fifth Avenue with Tom Laurie and Bob the Puppet. Tom, how's that job security feeling? You know, Nance... You think you know a puppet <laughs> when you work with him every yeah, day. Yeah. The first opportunity, yeah. Ed McMahon, Mr. Big Star, comes along, See? and what does he do? Uh -huh. <sighs> the competition will only make you better, Shortcake. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Catherine Betts from Vogue is with Lori and some uh, lovely members of our family here in the bedroom. Lori. A little gray around the temples. Thank you very much. I am with Catherine Betts. She's been reporting on the front lines of uh, fashion for Vogue magazine for many years. So you're the perfect person to take us through Vogue's September issue. Because I've got to tell you, when I look at these layouts, translating what is on the page to something I could wear is really tough. So how do you do it? Well, that's why we created the index actually about a year ago, which is the section in the back of the magazine. Very back of the magazine. And we wanted to make it really accessible, easy for readers to just flip to and pick out a piece, an item, mm. not the total look, one thing that would work for them, right. whether it's like a coat or a chunky heel. Now, obviously, the first thing that we wanted to talk about is something we're both wearing, which is the skinny pants. Right. This is really the look, the pant is, is it for fall. Yeah. Everybody has to have a great pair of skinny pants. Making me pant. Sounds good. And we also have uh, some, like, Nev, why don't you come on in? Nev Campbell's going to be modeling our first thing. This is the camel toe. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Well, thank you very much. You like Columbo. Yeah, that's it. Cover her up. Good it's idea. Nice. Yeah. The camel mm -hmm. toe, a classic coat season hey. is really big right now. Yeah. And um, this is something everybody can wear. This is the color great. for fall, huh? Yeah. Looks good. CK item. Now, Suzanne is... Uh, Sporting chunky jewelry. Gold. We love gold jewelry, especially, but anything gold, gold leather, gold satin for evening. Gold is a great color this season. Well, looks good. You like really it? Nice. Yeah, it's kind of a Wonder yeah. Woman. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Spend yeah. all those uh, promises. We have Jillian on remote in a gorgeous uh, sweater because bright, apparently bright knits are really. Uh, big this year, right? Yeah, just any kind of color, just adding color. She's got great head-to-toe color, but um, the, the blue sweater, a great pair of colored pants, anything in color. Look great, Jill. Be careful, there's aroused elephants in the area. <laughs> I want to introduce you to Beatrice. She's our housekeeper. She was on vacation last week, so we didn't get to meet her, but what is she sporting? Oh, this is the greatest hey, bag. Beatrice. This bag is actually from The Gap, and it's only like $48 or something, and it is perfect black under the shoulder handbag. We're, we're seeing a lot of bigger bags this season and this one's great. You like it, big? I think like all the editors at Vogue actually have this bag. Looks right very now. cool. We have the woman oh. who dresses me every day, Joanna, coming in with a beautiful long black coat. The long skinny line is the line for fall and this coat, obviously, is, is um, that in that line. The long coat is probably the newest looking coat. And these are all things that are very accessible. Yeah. Now, want something for the men, because I understand the military look is in. The military look is definitely in. Come on in, model. <laughs> as you can see, it's very versatile. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Form a column of platoons. Leading platoon, column right. 
You look great, Ed. You like the fatigue look? How do you like this? I like it. I think it looks good these, on you. These coats are incredible. I mean, they will stand any kind of temperature, any kind of weather. It's wonderful. These are great. Oh, and I see you've got the aviators on, too. Oh, of course. You have to have that. I, I left my scarf in the closet. <laughs> Should have the scarf waving in the breeze. You know, the whole thing. Thank you so much, Catherine, for being here and showing us some really easy ways to get a great fall look and Ed for sporting the, uh, the military look. Tom? Thank Ed, you. Ed's an interesting cross between General Patton and Dean Martin, isn't he? <laughs> 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 when we come back, if I could uh, mate some elephants, just yeah. imagine it. Yeah, that's what's yeah. going on in Portland, Oregon, more successfully than anywhere else in the country. Next, on Fox After Breakfast. This is no ordinary toothbrush. This is the Braun Oral-B Ultra, clinically proven to remove plaque better than an ordinary toothbrush. Dentists say change your toothbrush every three months. We say change it forever. The new Braun Oral-B Ultra. What's it gonna take to undo this much damage? About three minutes. With Pantene Pro-V deep fortifying treatment. Deep conditioning used to take me at least 20 minutes. Pantene works in just three. The exclusive pro-vitamin formula fortifies by penetrating your hair root to tip, restoring health, renewing shine, and reinforcing the natural strength of your hair. It's deep conditioning without the weight. Pro-V deep fortifying treatment for hair so healthy it shines. Why wait? For my feminine itching, I depend on Vagisil Cream to stop it instantly. And for a painful burning itch, I get maximum strength Vagisil for even stronger relief. There's Vagisil cream and maximum strength. She wanted to start a new life. Have dinner with me tonight. But she has a secret. Nina, one hour. No one can know. You like living with the ghost. Bridget Fonda. Please, Bob, let me go. If you pull this job off for me, I'll see what I can do to help you. Point of no return tonight on Fox. Parental discretion advised. Really greasy pots and pans. Time out. Who made the sort of greasy stuff last? Not Ultra Dawn. It's the best at dissolving tough grease. It breaks it up and takes it away. Okay, Smarty Pants, you forgot this glass. And you've already done the greasy stuff, so how are you gonna clean this? Well, with Dawn, you can sort of bend the rules. See? Clean. Ah, so there is no order. Ultra Dawn, the best at taking tough grease out of your way. Welcome to Wilmer, Minnesota, home of Jenny O where people have a natural way of doing things, like eating. So I guess it's only natural that our turkey is Jenny O natural choice. Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast, live from 212 Fifth Avenue with Tom Laurie, Bob the Puppet, Ed McMahon, Nev Campbell, and what's with these elephants, Tom? Yeah. Well, we're going to get to the elephants. Just imagine it in just a moment. Uh, we've got Ed and Nev over there with Laurie and Bob at the kitchen hey. table, where we're going to be uh, all chatting in just a moment. Road Warriors Phil Kogan, Suzanne Wong back uh, from the road, resting here in the apartment. And Ed McMahon's lovely wife, Pam, is here with us, too. Yay. Pam, welcome. Good to have Yay. you here. Good to have you here. Now... Had already won, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going back to uh, Jillian Hamilton and a man who has achieved a unique status among those who work with very large animals in the world. Right, Jill? That's right, Tom. We're very fortunate this morning because we're here behind the scenes at the Washington Park Zoo in Portland. We're here with Dr. Michael Schmidt, who has been working at the zoo for over 24 years. Good morning, Michael, and say hi to Tom. Good morning, and hi, Tom. Hi, Michael. So now, you have been here for over 24 years. Tell us a little bit about how your work evolved from working with the animals in general to specifically concentrating on elephants. Well, when I got here out of veterinary school, of course, I was responsible for all the animals, but... Uh, Basically, this zoo was world famous for breeding uh, elephants, and that's a very rare and unusual thing for zoos to do. Very few zoos have ever bred elephants, and this zoo was the world leader. So I really got kind of caught up in that because it was an exciting thing and a very rare thing, and so that's kind of how I got started. 
Now, you are the foremost breeder of Asiatic elephants in captivity. Tell us about the artificial insemination program that you guys have here at the Washington Park Zoo. Well, when, we, when you have natural breeding success, um, that's great. And, and since it's such a rare thing, you, you've worked on how, how can we share this with the rest of the world? Other zoos haven't bred these animals. Is there something we can do to help? And artificial insemination would be ideal because if you could collect the sperm from Packy, who was our first calf born here and who's now sired seven calves of his own, Packy could be breeding cows in Alaska or South America or Australia because you freeze his sperm in liquid nitrogen at 300 degrees below zero, and it should be good Ouch. for 10,000 years. <laughs> 10,000 years. Now, we, now, this is Rose the second. Here she is, Tom and Lori. And we have some tape of the day that Rose was born. Oh, Let's good. roll that tape. Tell us, uh, oh, Dr. Michael, oh, how did you feel baby. when Rose was born? Oh, my goodness. Born? Yes, you are. Well, it's, and how is it being a part of Rose the Second's family? Well, it's, yeah, it is a big family, oh, and the amazing. elephants incorporate the people who work with them into their family. And so when a baby's born, it's just like a baby born in your own family. Everybody's excited, and your heart's pounding, and you're just hoping that it'll get to its feet right away and, and, and do well. And so it's a very, very emotional kind of uh, experience for everybody. You're Michael? very lucky because the social structure, Tom and Lori, of elephants is very specific. How did these elephants allow you into their social structure? Well, they have a dominance hierarchy or a pecking order. And so um, every person who works with them is a dominant elephant and is treated with a great deal of respect as you would another dominant elephant. And so. We, we treat them with respect, and they give us respect, and, and that allows us to be part of their family. Michael? Now, Tom and Lori, Jill, I don't as know you can, said... Jill, yes. can, I'm sorry, yes. I don't know yes. if you could hear me, but I, I had a question yes. for Michael. Okay. Uh, can he hear me? Yeah, he yes, can, hear okay. can hear you. Okay, Michael, I was wondering about the elephants and whether they are monogamous. Do they keep to the same mate if allowed that opportunity, or are they fickle? Well, it's funny. They have definite preferences, and we have some bulls like... Uh, Packy, who will not breed uh, a cow like Susie, say, and a bull like Hugo, that will, will uh, she would prefer him. And the same goes for uh, the females preferring one bull over another. So they're not monogamous, but they definitely have shown preferences. Yeah, mm -hmm. would you cheat on something that big? <laughs> <laughs> Making common lore, you have to hear this beautiful love story because Dr. Michael brings these elephants together. But in fact, Dr. Michael, the elephants helped you make a love connection. That's true. When I got here, I met a lovely woman named Ann who was working in the veterinary department, and we fell in love and we became married a year later. So I guess there must be something in the air. Aww. Are you guys breeding? No, don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks, Dr. Michael. We want to thank the elephants and the keepers who came up this morning at 2:30 a.m. just to help us with uh, bringing you this information. Bye, guys, from Yay. Washington Park Zoo. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Joe. Nice stuff. But thank yeah. you, Michael. A pleasure to, to visit with you this morning in, yeah. in Oregon. Lori? Why don't you come on over here? Because right. you and me and Ed and Nev are going to be asked questions about something that is important to all of us, uh, about our relationships and things in our lives by Nancy. Nancy, right, you have questions for us? That's right, but I'll tell you what those questions are, Lori, when we come back to Fox After are Breakfast. There prizes? Sounds good. Yeah. We get prizes or stuff? Tom, yeah. now you just wait. Just you wait. <laughs> All right, Bob. I'm ready. Fire away. Ready, Dad? When the game starts this early, you need real coffee. Folgers Coffee Singles. Real mountain-grown coffee in a real coffee filter for one freshly brewed cup. Folgers Coffee Singles, because real coffee makes real good mornings. You can feel it. Introducing the remarkable new Gillette Sensor Excel for women. Feel its specially shaped handle and its soft rubber grip that won't slip when wet. Ahead of the blades are soft, flexible microfins to protect your skin while gently lifting stubborn hair. Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast, and now it's time for Nancy Wants to Know. My goodness. Wow. Thank you. And I'm Nancy. Okay, this is how it goes, guys. I'm going to ask you two questions about a subject that affects us all. But first, I want to know from each of you about your relationship status. Tom, you're first. Lori and I are just friends. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've been working together. Are yeah, you, I know, Tom. Uh, yes, your uh, true relationship married. I've been married for 14 years. I have uh, two, two daughters. All right. Lori? I um, have been in a relationship for two and a half years, and we're just about to move in together. Oh, and she's exciting. hoping he'll propose. Wow. Yes, everybody <laughs> stay off of Lori on this. Okay, Ed, you? Uh, I have uh, five children. Uh, my wife, one of those children is from my wife, Pam. You'll meet Pam shortly, yeah. a beautiful lady. Yeah. Pam is here. 
and I'm um, very happily married. All right. And All right. Nev, how about you? Been in a relationship for five and a half years, and I've been married for a year and a half. Wow. wow. Very yeah. exciting. See, we've got a real uh, breadth of experience to draw yeah. from here. All right. Now, here's question you don't one. Ask Bob? Oh, we know Bob's a player, but okay, okay. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> My relationship is with a barca lounger. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. All right. Let's ask question number one. Now, how important is sex to a good relationship? Tom, that's wow. you. Oh, all right. See, I think it's very important to to a married I mean, to with my wife. You're talking about. Right? Is that what you're talking about, Tom? Yeah, I'm, I want to. Uh, you're giving me wide parameters. I'd like to specify this just a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, for me and my wife, it's it's darn important. All yeah. right. Stuttering is ugly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, notice, I notice your body language got a little nervous there, Tom. But that's all right. It's all that's right. All no right. problem. Hamana, hamana, hamana. Lori, take it away. Oh, uh, very, very important. It's a big player in our relationship, that's for sure. A big player? Is that yeah. what you said? Oh, yeah. Would you like to elaborate? No. No, she has to All go right. now. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Ed? It's essential. Yes. Uh, you must essential take a lot of way, uh, care to make it uh, perpetuate. Uh, do it as often as possible. <laughs> and I will quote you on that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. And, right, Pam. Pam. and Nev? Absolutely important. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I think hey, don't we have to break for commercial? <laughs> not, not quite Hot yet, Tom. Here. Not quite What's yet. What's question number two, man? All right, here's question yeah. number two. How important is money to a good relationship? What do you think, Tom? Well, I think it's always, you know, it's like it's better to have it than not. It, it, when uh, my wife and I got married, though, neither of us had much of it, and, uh, and we were very happy together. So I don't, I don't think it's the determining factor. But it doesn't. So money's kind of ruined everything. Is that what you're saying? Is that no, what you're trying to say? No, it's but but I think if you have a good relationship, that that shouldn't matter as much. That's yeah. lovely, Tom. Lori. Yeah, I have to agree that money isn't uh, a big factor. It it really does make life easier, but uh, it's not a determining factor in whether you love somebody or not. I think that's beautiful. Beautiful answer so far, yeah. Ed. Yeah, I'm well enough over here. <laughs> <laughs> you're comfortable. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, Joey Lewis was a great nightclub comedian yes. years ago yes. and his great line was I've been rich and I've been poor and rich is better yeah. 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 and would you agree with that Ed well it doesn't make any difference if you're happy if you're in love you can be in love on a very low income right. yeah. Yeah. And right. if you're if you're miserable you can be awfully upset on a big income yeah. so being in love is more important than money right yeah. wow that's beautiful and Nev Basically what everyone else said. I don't, I don't think money is that important, but it's nice to not have to worry about it. I think it makes it easier in the relationship if you're not worrying about it. You yeah. probably were through slim times in the early part of your relationship. You yeah, know? absolutely. Absolutely. It's been up and down. It's, it's easier if you're more balanced, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Nancy, well, is that all you needed job. to know, Nancy? <laughs> Nancy, that was good. Well, yeah. thank you. I Ed, think this can become a regular segment. <laughs> yeah. do, do we go on to the bonus round now? Yeah, right. <laughs> what do no, we get, sorry. by the way, for our brilliant answers? They were beautifully said, and I, I think they're quotes that everyone will cherish forever. And, oh, uh, don't get sappy on it. Oh, well, you just uh, <laughs> Let's go to break. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for playing along with Nancy. You want to ask you questions One, we come yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, we want to know about no. you. Yeah, well, Nancy has to go. Oh, so. yeah, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> After the break, we're going to give you the scoop on tomorrow's show and find out who the Road Warriors are meeting. That's next on Fox After Breakfast. Everyone take a big cleansing breath with me. Right. And exhale. Wow. Fox After Breakfast is brought to you by Bounty, the quilted quicker pick. Please make that telephone call now. Welcome back to Fox After Breakfast live from New York City with Tom, Lori, Bob the Puppet, Ed McMahon, Nev Campbell, and I'm your announcer, Nancy Giles. Thank you, Nancy. We'll have questions for you someday. Oh, no. We, we've got about two minutes left to the end of the show. For about one of those minutes, let's go back to Tulsa. And Faye, would you mind giving Nev Campbell just a little bit of a tap lesson? Sure will. Okay. Right now would be good. <laughs> okay, go ahead and just show her what you're going to do. Now, Neva has to do this at the same time. Okay. Just watch the feet. Stomp, full hop, saw lap, saw lap, step, stomp, full hop. She's going real fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nev. She's not even thinking. <laughs> Don't worry, you got that acting thing to fall back on. <laughs> Thank you, Faye. So Nev starts, uh, she starts her actual tap lessons next week, right? Yeah. Fast. That was very fast. It was like there was a G force on that lesson. It was. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Jeff, very much. Let's go now to Jillian for a thanks to Mike Schmidt and all of the elephants in Portland, Oregon. <laughs>
Washington Park Zoo has been superb. Thanks again, <laughs> Michael. Tomorrow... Yes? I'm, I just got spit upon by an elephant. <laughs> species of roses and immortalized the celebrities by naming the roses after them. Okay. <laughs> to, to Catherine Betts from Vogue, to Ed McMahon, to Pam, can you show us that jacket? These are going to be available. It's a fabulous jacket. Hey, Look at all the watches and look on the back. On the back. The best of best. What time is it? Or what hour is it? Yeah. Right. Thank you, yeah. Pam. They're Thank you. Too. The Tessa Roney's for visiting us from New Jersey. A pleasure as well. Yes, and hey, tomorrow, please Roney. join us. Lori Petty will be here from Lush Life, Fox's new sitcom, and also Marion Hartley joins us. So John, please be with us. John, the show's not over till the opera guy sings. Can you sing us out? Sure. Oh, sing yeah. us out. The last to wait for the treats refrigerate. And most experts agree that waiting's the hardest part. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> He doesn't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're my favorite line. Come on. Thank you. Uh, That's great. My favorite line.